it is, it's hot, but it's supposed to be winter. <laughs> Zone 10 can be so interesting, so unique here in the subtropics of Florida. <laughs> So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be starting to plan out our backyard winter vegetable garden because it's, I mean, even though it's like literally the beginning of January, it's in the seventies right now. And I need to get this going <laughs> like yesterday. So that's why I have some tomato twists and some steaks behind me. Cause we're going to literally start mapping it out. I'm also going to have to figure out like, what's all the stuff I need, both from materials, soil, mulch, anything else. Plus, um, what, what am I planting? What am I planting? What do I need to start seeds for? What do I need to go scouring the stores in January when they may not have a lot of plants? Like, what am I going to even try to find? So that's what we're going to do today. So if you're wanting to get your subtropical winter vegetable garden going here in zone 10 or nine or 11 or wherever you live, then hang out. Let's get planning. Get a piece of paper, get a pen. Let's go. Usually in winter, I would just like get going with drawing out my vegetable garden and starting to fill in what's going to go where. But since this is like a totally new space that we're getting into, I literally don't know how big the beds are going to be. I mean, I have an ish, like I'm thinking three by 12, but like, I don't know that that's how big they are going to be. I don't know if the spacing literally works out. I just literally like went out there one day and I was like, yeah, I mean, I think it kind of sort of fits. So today what we're going to do instead of starting to draw first, what we're going to actually do is physically go out there and map it out and make sure we can create beds that aren't too deep. Um, ones that have enough walkways, which I'll talk you through kind of the thought process behind some of this. And like, how many can I fit? I think I can fit three, maybe four, maybe less, maybe more, who knows? So let's get going. Let's start mapping it out. And I'll talk you through kind of all the questions that are in my head and like how I'm thinking through everything. So when looking at locations in my backyard, actually one of the first things that I looked at was the sun. Like how much sun does this backyard get? And different locations get different varying amounts. And while when I originally designed my front vegetable garden and I was focused on getting some semi shade because, well, we have a lot of sun and it's intense down here in the subtropics. When it comes to the vegetable garden in the back, because we're really gonna be pushing this for fall, winter, and spring, <laughs> the sun isn't quite as intense and actually its location changed quite a bit, right? In the summertime, it's like straight up. But right now, I mean, we're not that late in the day and it's already behind these palms and the pine and it's pretty low in the sky compared to what it'll be come the summertime. And that means that when it's lower in the sky, it throws a lot more shade deeper into our yard. One of the things that like it is a big difference is the patio. During the summertime, almost this entire grass, well, it's not grass right now, but this grassy area was completely sun. But now that we're in the winter time, I mean, you can see the shade on this area throughout the day, it comes pretty significantly up, a good eight, nine, 10 feet. And when you're planting your vegetable garden, what you wanna consider is if you got deep shade, like from a structure, your plants aren't gonna grow well for vegetables. There's always plants that like native plants and stuff like that, that you can get into shady areas. But for vegetables, they pretty much want what's considered full sun. But we've talked about this in other videos. Full sun means different things depending on where you live. I mean, Alaska's full sun is not Florida's full sun. So being in zone 10, you know, we're looking at four, six, maybe eight hours, which that's about all the sun we get in a day anyways. <laughs> so we wanna look at spaces that are gonna maximize sunlight for the fall winter, spring season. Now, full sun in the win winter, summer, summer, totally different case. Then we're talking shade cloths and stuff like that. But since that primary area, because the main classic vegetable seasons, those seasons, we needed an area that would be quote unquote full sun. And for us, now it's the shadiest part of the day. It would be this section right behind me all the way over there. Now the challenge is, is there's a lot of shrubbery over there and it gets pretty narrow and I wouldn't be able to fit that many beds. And because this is gonna be really pushing for the most amount of production, I picked this, this area. So what we generally talked about, Ben and I, and now we gotta scope it out, is this area gets the most amount of sun throughout the day, basically from once the sun comes up over there, it has sun, 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 sun for a good four to six hours. So we're gonna use this spot. So now, now we gotta figure out how big I can go without it like completely taking up the yard for dogs and us running around a little bit, but also maximizing what space we are gonna give to it. So what I'm gonna first do is just kind of stake out the, the maximum, per, well, the maximum-ish perimeter 
of the entire thing. So this won't be like what a bed's gonna be because you're gonna look at this in a second and be like, wait, what the heck? That looks like it's huge. You're not gonna be able to have that all its beds. No, this is just gonna be like, what's the entire space gonna be? And then from there, we'll figure out how many beds we can fit in it. Here is the space I'm thinking. I have no idea how big that is. And right now I'm just using yellow tomato twists more so it's easy for you guys to see than that you need these. You could use any staking type equipment or string just to map out the area that you need. It's not a requirement to have these. I just happen to have these on hand. So I figured it would be a good place to start. So if I back up, let's see how big this space is. Does it look big enough or do we need more? We could come out further. I just don't know if we want to. So I'm actually going to go grab Ben and see his thoughts on about the size that I'm generally laying out for this. But I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we want to go all the way to the fig and the sugar cane. Let's see. Let me go get Ben. So you see the four steaks out there. What do you, how do you feel about taking up that much space in the vegetable garden? Excited. Excited? Oh, really? Oh, okay. There you go. It's a lot of space. Does it need to be bigger? What if we went all the way out this fig here? Is that too much? I worry that that'd be too much for us to stay on top of. And like actually eat all of That too. Next, can you help me measure how far these are apart to sure. make sure we kind of have like, okay. While Ben is grabbing the tape measure, what I also just did is I ran, I ran around inside the house and I looked out different windows because part of the thing is we like a vegetable garden. I know some people are like, oh, the look, you should hide it away but we like the way they look. So I wanted to see like which views are we gonna get from inside the house. And um, when I looked at kind of all the windows is like, I can kind of see it from here, but like definitely can see it, definitely see it. So these plus like I talked about in the other video, the, the one, the big plan one, um, our master bedroom, once we get rid of the shrubbery that blocks the window, we would actually be able to see the vegetable garden, you know, when we wake up in the morning, which would be really nice. So I'm excited for that. So I'm just going to make a note. So the current space, what Ben and I agreed to was 20 feet wide and then 18 feet deep. Um, I don't know if that's all going to work out, but I'm just going to note that in the little project tracker so that as we go figure out these next steps, I don't have to like come back and be like, wait, what was that? <laughs> so right now, 18 feet by 20 feet. Is that right? Wait, 18 feet by 20 feet? 18 feet by 20 feet. Yes. So when it comes to the depth of the beds, what I'm thinking is three feet deep. Yeah, three feet deep. <laughs> I'm trying to keep this like make sense with what I wrote down this way. So three feet deep. And the reason is, is just because like my arm length. Um, not that like I'm like a short person. I'm like a slightly above average woman. So when it comes to reaching into a bed, one and a half to two feet tends to be really comfortable. So if you're going to reach from either side, people tend to be like three feet to four feet is how wide, deep, wide, deep <laughs> your bed should be. <laughs> and because of that, now I find as a lady that three feet tends to be a little bit more comfortable than four feet. So as you design your bed, cons consider <laughs> which, which, how far you wanna reach out. But one of the things is that at least one of the beds, I'm thinking we're gonna put like a flat kind of fence, fence type trellis for tomatoes in. So because of that, I'm definitely gonna wanna stay with the three feet because if it was four feet, I would not be able to reach it without stepping on a bunch of vesicles and that's a bad idea. So the question is going to be, how many row beds can I fit in? The other piece that you want to think about is between your beds is you want at least three feet. Now, I know there are people out there that are like, I don't need that much space. You want three feet. Trust me, you want three feet. One, OSHA regulation, standard walking distances, da, 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 da. But also, what I have found is if you don't give yourself at least three feet, what happens? is something's growing really well and it has all its little leaves 
and they go beyond your bed by like six inches to a foot. So all of a sudden, if you were like, no, I can make it work with two feet, you're out of space and you're hitting all those leaves as you try to like wheel carts through there and just walk through it yourself. And you're just like killing the plant slowly by just like damaging it over and over again. So give yourself three feet that way on either side, you can get like six inches of like carrot greens coming over the side or whatever. And you won't feel the need to be like, oh my gosh, I'm damaging my plants. So three feet at least. So now we get to do math, <laughs> which I love math. So here's the way I'm thinking, three feet deep bed, then three feet walkway is six feet. So we're generally gonna work in increments of six, which works out because we have a 20 foot depth. Plus we need kind of a little bit of perimeter um, so that when we mow, we don't mow over the lettuces and the peppers and the whatever falls outside the bed. So if I do that, we do six feet, six feet, six feet. That means I can get three sets of row beds, which is what I generally estimated anyways, plus a little bit on the one side, plus a little bit on the other will get us about that 20 feet. I think that makes sense. Hold on, let me write that down and verify. So three foot bed plus three foot walkway plus three B plus three W. This is six, nine, 12 plus three foot bed, 15 plus three foot walkway, 18. And then if I did a two foot walkway on this side, that's 20. Okay, so just to explain my, my crazy math. So if I started with a bed and this said it's three feet, then I add my three foot walkway till my next bed, that's six feet plus three foot for another bed, nine feet plus another walkway, 12 feet, plus a bed, 15 feet, plus a walkway, 18 feet. But I never put a walkway over here, so if it's at least two feet-ish, because this is not gonna be exact, there's my 20 foot of depth, hooray. And if you're wondering like, what is this that I'm using here? This is the 2023 Wild Floridian Garden Planner. Uh, yes, I'm actually using it too to plan out my garden. So if you're interested in getting your own Wild Floridian Planner so that you can do your garden projects and get plant ideas for every month, go to www.wildfloridian.net slash planner. Okay, onward with figuring this out. Now we need to go the other direction because we did the 20 feet deep, but now wide, right? And when it comes to width, we, again, don't want to run over it with lawnmowers. So if we put a few feet, let's say three feet on either side-ish, then that gives me 18 minus three minus three. So that would be 12 feet. Wow, I, we actually did that pretty good. So I'm gonna make a note of that down here so I don't forget. And then I can start drawing this out and we can start staking stuff out there too in preparation. Well, should I stake it yet? No, because we're gonna lawn mow until all the supplies are here. So I'll leave the yellow stakes for now, but we'll just write it out and start drawing it out. Yes, sounds good. So, okay, so we're gonna go three foot walkway plus 12 foot beds plus three foot walkway, and that will equal 18, yay. Smiley face. It just makes my life easier, and I go boop, boop. Okay, so we got our basic layout. Now, it's not drawn to scale. Maybe I should make note of that. Um, but as long as I know the beds are three feet, the walkways are three feet, and I focus on when I build it, really making sure these are maximized. Like even if this is like two and a half and two feet, like who really cares? Um, mostly it's just like, I don't wanna be, I wanna have space to walk and not like accidentally mow the vegetables. So that's the biggest thing. So we've got our three beds. But now we gotta figure out some other pieces. Like how much soil is this gonna take and how much mulch is this gonna be? So we gotta do some more math. I'm gonna need my calculator for a second, but I'll take you through the math. Okay, so what we need, we know we've got 20 by 18, so the total space is 20 by 18, which equals, let's see, I can do the numbers, it's two, it's six, carry the one, two, 360 square feet, cool. And then we've got three beds that are three by 12, so we got three beds times 
three times 12 feet. Let's make my life easier. Nine by 12, which would be 90 plus 18, which would be 108. So this would be 100 square feet. Okay. And then, <laughs> and then, wait, there's more. So that means 360 minus that. Minus 108 equals 235, 252. Now you may be wondering, why the heck do you want to know the area of the area of your backyard vegetable garden? Well, because I got to figure out how much soil I need and I need to figure out how much mulch I need because I want to make sure this is very clear. I don't want the old grass plus all the weeds growing into the vegetable bed. So using mulch will be really important. So now I can figure out how much do I need of these things? Um, and let's just do some really quick math. So if we do 108 square feet and we want to go, let's see, we do it in cubic yards. We need two cubic yards of soil. So by doing two cubic yards of soil, we'll be able to go six inches deep over the entire area, which for winter crops, especially if we're gonna start many by seed or small transplants like that should work out pretty well for us from a timing perspective now let's ask ourselves i did some quick googling um because a lot of times when i've done beds i have just gone and bought back soil from like the home depots the lows and that is a totally fine option when starting your vegetable garden but i did the math and it would cost me like a thousand dollars that is too expensive now, luckily, my city has a soil program, which is way cheaper. So it's going to cost me like 50 bucks for all this soil. So I'm going to put in an order for two cubic yards of soil plus a delivery fee. And I think it's like 25 bucks for the actual soil and then $25 for the delivery. And hopefully it gets here in time uh, for us to get going. Well, not in time. Like, I just wanted to get here quickly so we can, like, get going on this. So uh, not going to buy a bunch of back soil. But if you're doing a much smaller project, like, back soil is totally fine. It just you can burn a lot of money really fast if you're not just doing like a really, really small project. And this is not a really small project. So we know we need two cubic yards. Now, normally I would do chip drop, but because I don't, <laughs> when I do chip drop normally, we get a lot of soil, we, not a lot of soil, get a lot of mulch. And that might be way too much mulch for what I need. So um, I can also order mulch to my city. So I'm gonna go away and do some quick math and see how much I need to order. And then I'm gonna go order some, uh, some mulch. So I went and did my funny math. And for this one versus like with the soil where I was talking about going six inches deep, I was actually thinking I could go somewhere between three and six. So um, I used three inches just to kind of get an idea of like how many cubic yards. And it came out to about 2.3 cubic yards. So we're going to order three cubic yards of mulch, double ground log mulch. And <laughs> Um, it's going to cost us about $50. So all in all, for all the soil, all the mulch, for 360 square feet, 100 bucks, which would be 10 bags of soil normally. So I feel like that's a pretty good deal. So I'm going to add that to my little punch list. We're going to keep it moving with planning this thing. <laughs> I might try to use some areca palms just to create like a nice simple border. But if I don't have like a chainsaw, like a little electric chainsaw in the near future, like that's not going to stop me from getting these beds in. That might be something we do because we just, we need to prune the Rika palm. So I'm not going to really worry about borders. I think the mulch itself will be pretty distinct enough for us for now. But what we do need to figure out is what's our first round of crops because uh, it's January and I need to get something started if I don't want to buy all transplants. And we saw already at the beginning of the winter, late fall season, the prices are crazy. Now, when I was doing Christmas shopping and grabbing like Christmas lights and some other Christmas stuff from the... Home Depots and the Lowe's. I did go, I went and looked, I went and looked. I didn't see seeds generally, but what I did see was transplants, but what they didn't have during fall that I did see them have was they had more of the like little tray starts where it's like three, six dollars for like six little starts versus like ten dollars for a half gallon plant or whatever. I don't want to be spending ten dollars per plant. That is not a good use of money, though technically it can have a return on investment. It's just you got really small margins. The margins are much smaller for your return on investment versus if you can do seed or small starts. So as I plan this out, I got to figure out um, <laughs> when am I starting from seed and like, what am I going to go buy?
because I will buy stuff because I do, once we have the soil here, like I want to get it going quick um, and the seeds depending on where they're at. But the other thing is, is that because we're in January and we're not very far off from warm weather crop season, I do need to think about where I'm probably going to put like things like tomatoes and peppers. So having things like broccoli and cauliflower, which I do want, I don't want to have a, like, I got to think about where I'm going to put those versus where I'm going to put tomatoes and peppers, because by the time I'm wanting to start seeds for those, like the broccoli and the cauliflowers will not be done yet. So, so let's think that through. So when I look at the space, when I think about longer term, I'm thinking this row, just because, you know, we don't want to create shade. This can be where I put like a tomato trellis and I'm thinking I at least do one. We'll still have the tomato trellis in the front, but I can have one back here. So if I'm going to be putting a tomato trellis slash tomatoes in here, whatever I put here needs to be kind of faster turnaround crops. So things like lettuce and carrots and that'll probably be the ones I should put here versus these beds, which might have peppers in them right here. These ones I'm thinking things like, do I want to do potatoes? I guess the other thing is, it's like, I can always section stuff off. It's just tomatoes really. Cause I mean, I could always, if I need to like do like peppers and peppers and whatever in the middle. So, huh. <laughs> so of the things, so if you need ideas for what to grow in January, you can check out, I have a video there for uh, what happened in January that you can be starting right now. But here's what I'm thinking is if I got tomatoes back here, then really I'm going to do a lot of lettuce here. So I think what I'll do is I'll do kind of like a lettuce, lettuce kind of thing, maybe down the middle. Cause we do eat a lot of salads and then we could do some carrots here and we'll just kind of use this bed to be a quick flip. What I do want to do here is I, I need to get onions onions, bunching onions, like green onions would be really good to have. Um, I need a lot of onions, la 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 la. But I also probably should do potatoes. So if I can find potatoes somewhere, I think we might use some of this bed for potatoes. We'll try it. I've never done potatoes before, so I don't want to give up too much space, but onions we use a lot of, slash green onions. I'm going to shorthand to green onions. And this is going to be the bed where I want to do a lot of broccoli. Don't make fun of me if I spell these things wrong because I am bad at spelling. Okay, so broccoli, cauliflower. Um, we already have some beets up front and radishes, and we don't eat a ton of those. So I don't really want to get too far into growing a ton of that stuff. And I really do want to quickly be able to turn some beds around, especially this one and this one for warm weather crops like peppers and tomatoes because we eat a lot of those. So I think I'm just going to go with stuff like that. Now, lettuce I can start from seed. So I need to see how many seeds of lettuce. And I can start some in ground and I can also do some at starts. Um, so we can have some in ground that I can just start right away. I know I did script here and cursive there. It's okay. We're just working with it. So lettuce seeds, and then I'll just check out, like we'll start some stuff ourselves. I don't want to go and buy a ton of lettuce, but maybe I will, cause you know me. All right, and then carrots, you have to start those ones in ground. I do have carrot seeds already. So I can just get those going once we have soil and stuff like that. Um, I have broccoli seeds, I'm pretty sure. So I need to do self starts here. We do have cauliflower seeds. So I can do self starting and I'll do some in the ground, but I'll definitely, I got some seed starting stuff. What else do I have on here? Onions. I want to see, I have onion seeds, so I can self start some, but I also want to see green onions but I want to see if they have onion starts again. Like go to the Home Depot slash Lowe's and see if they're going to have any there. So those would be some good ones. And then potatoes. I don't know. Where am I going to get this? This is a big question mark for us. And I would also consider doing broccoli and cauliflower starts if it's the right variety for picking up at the store. I also need to amend some things I need to do is I need to uh, charge some biochar because I got lots of ashes. So that's one of the things when you buy soil is like it's may have the minerals like you know like the vitamins for your plants but it doesn't necessarily have the you know if you ever hear people talk about the microbiome but like if you think about it like your own 
system. Like it's like the good bacteria in your digestive system so that like your body can absorb all the like minerals and things it needs. It's kind of the same thing that's happening in the soil for the plants is like there's like bacteria and like funguses and bugs pooping stuff all out for, I don't know, just don't worry, manures poop. And <laughs> where it comes from just changes. But we need to do some things to like kickstart that because the soil we're going to get is not like it might have been inoculated, which just means like they killed all the life. So it's just minerals. And we can't live off of just vitamins. Like it doesn't work like that. So we will need to do some things to one, make sure that it has all the minerals. So that's where like biocharge and charging the biochar will come into play. Um, and if you have some like quick tips or good tips on charging biochar, I'd love to hear them because this will be my first time doing it. And then other things that we're going to use, I'm going to talk to my neighbor about getting some of her ra rabbit compost because um, poop has the good bacteria and stuff already in it. So getting it from her, she lives across the street and she has lots of rabbit poop. And then the other thing is, is that I do have my own vermicomposting from my black soldier fly. So that'll be really good stuff too. So we'll use that to mix in with the soil so that we can like get stuff going because we need to get stuff going. So I just want to make sure I remember that. Like, so now that I've got a checklist, what I'm going to do, I won't hang out here in the video and do it, is I'm going to try to get an estimate of how many like lettuce plants I think I'm going to need, how many carrot plants I think I'm going to need, so I can figure out how many seeds I need, how many starts I want to start, because that's what we're going to be doing across some of the next couple of videos, is I'm going to be going to look and see what my Home Depot, my Lowe's, and some of my other garden centers that are nearby have at this time of year, one. And two, I'm going to start some of my own seeds, and I need to know how much I need, because like if I make a bajillion carrots well I won't make carrot starts but like if I make a bunch of broccoli and then I have too many like what am I going to do with it and that always stresses me out when I have way too many not that we won't add a little extra but if you have too many and then you're just like you feel like you wasted your work you know what I'm saying yeah so that'll be what I do next so hopefully this helped you put together a game plan for yourself as you plan your subtropical winter vegetable garden and get you ready to get lots and lots and lots of harvest through the winter and the spring because that's what we can do down here in zone 10. Like we grow food all year round. Okay. I'll see you soon. Bye.